And Kyle was like, uh, broccoli cheese soup. <laughs> and it was like, I was like, I don't know if he's had this never before, or like, but I was like, I just want, I want to enjoy life like that. You know, it was just, it was so beautiful, you know. But I remember talking, what I with the gun, and you know it. Well, let everyone here will keep it a secret, right? Absolutely. Anyone gonna really tell that? No. I'll tell you a different story. The, um, some things, I just like to be, I, David trusted me with a lot. You know? Sure, and you, so, we all want to keep the mystery alive. Yeah, 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 so I'll skip that one. But, you know, he, I'll tell you this, he got me ready for that, seeing Bob, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, he got in the car with me. It scared me. Uh, I'll never forget it. Well, I mean, Bob is the scariest thing ever. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it scares us all. And I mean, how many here have had a nightmare about Bob? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do, like, to this day. But tell us what was going on when she's taking her face off. What do you see? Did you have any idea what that was gonna be? Did you have any idea what was going on? I mean, how was that for you? No idea. When, you know, I, I again, watching the scene was a surprise to me. I, I think David had described some things to me. I, you know, I can't remember specifically what it was, but uh, I had no idea there was gonna be this hand and this finger and this smile and this anything. But at the end of the day, um, again, I, I owe it all to Grace because it's kind of an actor's cliche, but they say everything you need is in your acting partner. And this was a textbook case. Like I looked the first moment I looked at her, just the beautiful depth of mystery and terrifying beauty that Grace is. Of, you know, I looked and I, I knew that that's all I had to work off of is just to look at her and let that take me. And it's kind of the magic of speaking of acting for David Lynch and, and, and you, know, you know, a lot of what happens I think with David is that he personally looks at all these tapes of auditions and selects a person. So a lot of the work for him as far as rehearsal and whatnot, he's looked at the person and deep, deeply and knows that's who he's looking for, you know, and it's gonna work out. And it's the magic of working with David Lynch. A lot of the magic is due to respect. Everybody on set, there's no status. We're all part of this. And everyone here is part of this Twin Peaks family, which is really wonderful about it. You know, and you don't know going in that it's gonna become a part of your life, a big part of your life in the best kind of way, but it is. And I think that also is the warmth you walk into and it, it kind of, as much work as I put into it, it was effortless when you get there. And it's, you know, we did one, two takes most. I, you know, I was like, that's it? You know, I was ready, ready to go. And somehow, and then you watch the end product and you're like, wow, he got it. I don't know how, you know, but he did. And, um, and so, yeah, I think that to me is that, you know, that respect that everybody has and, and his sweetness and humility and, you know, when I first met him, he was more keenly interested in me than I am practically, you know, he, and I could tell that I'm going to be in his baby, I'm gonna be in Twin Peaks, I'm gonna be this character, and he's a fan of that, you know, that, oh, you're gonna live in this, and they're gonna see you, you know, and I'm gonna, you know, I, I guess the best way I can describe it is that he's a fan of the show as well, and he's a fan of actors, he's a fan of the process, you know, and he's a true artist, it's like you're, stepping onto its canvas and being a part of this Van Gogh painting or something, you know, you're in it. And it's kind of, you know, and I've listened to a lot of other actors talk and, and, and I think we all kind of consistently pretty closely say the same thing. Our experience is very, even though he may use different techniques directing us, our experience I feel like is very consistent, you know? And again, it's that part of that respect that he, he's just a great human being, you know, a very humble human being. I like that. Does anyone have any questions? We've got Matt down here. Um, it's such an honor having both of you here because your scenes are among the 
greatest, I think, in the return. As soon as I saw the truck you shirt, I started laughing. Thank you a lot. It's such a great scene. But um, for both of you, the ways in which Lynch empowered your creativity, as you've said, as you both said, he looks at your work and he's like, I want that person, that specific person. Are, th are there certain examples of like how you felt empowered as performers to really bring every your own creativity to the I think part of the empowerment too, and, and when we talk about you know his, his practice of meditation is a big part of it because you're almost walking into a creative field is the best way I can describe it. You know, there's just work that he's done. I don't know. He must have 72 hours in a day that we have 24 because <laughs> there's no way he sleeps. You know, and he would have been thinking about my character and my scene more than me, like a hundred times more. You know, which is common for a director, but. Uh, so you're walking into something that you just kind of go with the ride. It's, it's the best way I can describe it. You know, he gave me some little adjustments, you know, uh, that, you know, basic things. And then just let's just go and do this, you know. And uh, so that's that's the magic of David Lynch is that he somehow creates this this warm space of creativity that everybody, again, every single person from props to you know, uh, wardrobe to makeup, and, and, and that excitement that we come and we want to be a part, you know, and yeah, we would do it every day for no pay for the rest of our life. It's just that fulfilling as an actor. It's what you dream of. And uh, yeah, and I think also just his respect for actors and his understanding of the craft and uh, you, you feel that, you know, and, and just again, as a human being. Yeah. What about you, George? What creativity did he bring out of you? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I frequently would remember my first conversation with him when I went to lunch with him, because every time there would be a lull in the conversation, I'd be like, do you really want to shoot a film again? Or I'd ask him a, a question. And before it was over, I said, uh, I said, you know, uh, I always feel like I gotta be making sure that I you know, like, or I come in the neighborhood of, like, you know, the darkness so that, like, I have stuff to draw on, and I, you know, so I'm sort of making sure I keep my, I don't want to lose that. I just started meditating. I said, uh, what do you think about that? He said, we were in a restaurant, too. He said, bullshit. <laughs> Absolute bullshit. And he said, and it let me off the hook in such a huge way. Like, I feel like it changed my whole life. And I would remember it because on set, as you all know, I was a real badass. So I was walking around like a real badass all the time. And, but I would sit by myself a lot because I just really wanted to stay focused. And somehow I would like, you know, we'd be at the farm and I'd be like, oh, no one will ever find me here. And, I'll, and he'd be like taking a shortcut to the bathroom. He would be like, how you doing, Ray? And then he would stop and he'd say, are you having fun? And I always felt like he remembered that I had the wrong idea about everything, in a way, you know. And he always asked me if I was having fun. And David also thinks I'm funny. You should all know because that's also not people's first impression of me all the time. And uh, I just felt like he he reminded me that there was a play that was going on. And I feel like he did that because it was it was liberating and it was it gave me freedom to to I just make choices that were I went for it, you know. And I felt encouraged that way. Are you still sending him postcards? I'm just curious. <laughs> yes I am. <laughs> I mean he's, he's never given me an interview. I was gonna kind of, well, I just wanna say one other thing about that to your question was that the very first time I met David was at Dirtfish and so walking up there where the sheriff's office is, I saw the sheriff's Twin Peaks car, you know? And I see that and I go, oh my God, it's real. <laughs> Twin Peaks exists. And I think that really actually informed me a lot. You know, they talk about imaginaries. There were no imaginary circumstances. This thing is real and we're, I'm stepping into something that exists. Yeah. And you know, that goes a long way actually. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Questions? Bill? John, uh, how did they make it look like your throat was ripped out and you were spurting blood? Well, how did they make it look so good now? It's actually <laughs> because, yeah, that was, 
Um, a, a good part of the time I spent on set or uh, uh, was actually putting that application on. It was a good three or four hours, you know, and I, I forget uh, the man's name who did it, but he did a, an amazing job. And so, you know, a lot of acting oftentimes is just sitting in a chair and, uh, you know, that's a real exciting life, you know, just having someone put this application on, you know, with, uh, so they did a great job, but it was real. I know, and that's the beauty, I think, of the, and I think something that David insisted upon with the new Twin Peaks season was, you know, not relying on CGI, but actually having these applications and all the special effects as much as possible were real. And that gives it a, a texture, a look, a realness, I think, that uh, contributes to the, to the show. Oh, more questions? Yes, ma'am? Uh, the pilot, you know, the parents' <clears throat> grief in the pilot, and part eight is the best, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a lot to list, but uh, with, with the return, I think, um, uh, Laura's scream, you know, the last episode, that scream yeah. is just unforgettable, and such... And her acting in it as well. I mean, as an actor, I'm just like, wow, that was that was really powerful. You know, I think for me, when James and Evelyn have sex on the Roy's Road, I mean, that's <laughs> um, <laughs> best moment of all. I mean, your part eight's fine. But that, <laughs> oh. Question? We know you have some questions. Oh, what? You in the red hat? <laughs> Do you have any questions for our panelists? You said you wanted to give them some shit. There's your chance. Uh, John Thorne in the back. Albert. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, Albert, I, I love Albert. Um, I, if, like, if someone said you could be a character, I would pick, I would probably pick Albert. But when we rewatch, I feel like every time I rewatch, I love Andy more. Yeah. I laugh so hard every, I love him so much. I think he's just the most brilliant. And if I could, if I could have scenes with any character, like as Ray, it would be Diane. That was that would be the best. I think you know the Palmer family. I mean, and, and here I am. I'm a you know a slain <laughs> person of that family. So I, I kind of feel an affinity to the family. But Grace definitely back when she just she just channels everything that is Twin Peaks to me. The you know the 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 depths of, again as I described her as a person um, and it's funny too just 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 today uh, I was at a cop shop getting this water and I, I saw a woman there getting something oh are you going you know are you part of the Twin Peaks thing she goes no she goes I don't like those actors <laughs> yeah and I go oh really and she goes so who are you I go oh well I'm, I'm one of the actors and she goes oh the old one or the new one? Go, well, the new one. She goes, well, that's okay then. And she goes, classic, and she said this classic foot in the mouth moment, you know, but it was, it was very sweet. It's just so nice to meet people, isn't it? <laughs> Always so wonderful. Um, I like to ask this question of people who are artists. Um, none of us get here by ourselves. So I'm curious to both of you, who gave you the the nicest, kindest moment in your career that sort of um, made you keep going forward and not give up? It, it was David, um, because that was 2009 when I met him, and I was not in a good spot, really. You know? So 
it was David. And he, we really got along. It was just, it made me feel optimistic, you know? Um, well, this was at a, kind of on a side subject, but it was at a Twin Peaks fan fest uh, previous to COVID. Uh, a fan came up to me and said, hey man, you're in the David Lynch Hall of Fame of creepy characters. <laughs> cool. That'll be my epitaph, I think, you know? A um, couple good friends of mine are here, Bill and Chris. Chris uh, happens to be the person that cast me for the first time in a play that he wrote. And I, I, I will give great credit to Chris, you know, for casting me and... Happy Hour was the name of the, the play at a, um, a festival that used to happen in Seattle. So, you know, it's really important early on just to get cast and be seen, you know, regardless. I mean, I I was nowhere near even knowing what I was doing. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow, he's a, he's just a nice guy. So, but. Uh, uh, you want to say that play, your emphasis in that play was a guy who played the I do, yeah, and that's kind of the, the, the it's the magic of the world of, of, of Twin Peaks and David Lynch and the overlap and all these connect, you know, there it is. Very cool. Any other questions? Go ahead, Matt. No one else, uh, we'll no one else has any. No, we, we'll go okay. with you, and then we'll go. We'll okay. go with hat and hat. I'm very excited to see the film uh, that uh, George made, that made Lynch want to work with him. And I, all I've seen, I've just looked it up. That Matthew Lillard is in the film as well. And I don't know if that's how Lynch wanted to cast Lillard. And I don't know. Um, I'd like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no. What do you want to say about that film, just in general? Or what, what Lynch loved about it? Okay, uh, well, you know, I felt, you know, in retrospect, because I, I, you know, making it, I didn't think, like, I had been marinating in David's work my whole life for some reason. I forgot that. But, you know, my film is a small world where a lot of things happen, which is, like, a lot of David's work. Yeah. It all takes place in the bathroom. It's 90 minutes in the bathroom, and over 60 people come through. So I think he liked that a lot. Um, it has a very, uh, what you were speaking about this morning, you know, the ending, uh, Netflix wouldn't have bought that ending. Uh, you know, um, and I think David, David did appreciate that. But I went to, uh, I studied acting um, at a conservatory called Circle in the Square in New York City. And it was a graduate program. But I didn't have a BFA, so I I auditioned, and they would make these rare exceptions. So I was 19 <clears throat> when I started. And there was this other gangly kid uh, who had also been let in a little bit early, and uh, he was Matthew Lillard. Oh. So we have known each other since uh, 91. Oh, wow. So he's one of my best buddies, yeah. Awesome. So, and I'm... I'm positive that him being cast in Twin Peaks didn't have to do with his huge body of work. <laughs> it was probably my film. <laughs> I think Lillard was I exceptional in the return. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He really was. I mean, I don't think it's enough credit. You, sir, had a question? Kind of a, more of a comment. I uh, run a little Instagram page with the Twin Peaks, as I'm sure other people here run Instagram. No, none of us have heard of Instagram. <laughs> never would have imagined. I have friends in other countries and English is not the first language. And how, how has social media informed your experience as, as actors? Uh, I, I probably, um, I have connections and get contacted by people who are Twin Peaks fans from all over the world. And I feel like uh, that's amazing. When I did the Pardon me, the UK um, Twin Peaks Festival, 
that was a lot of Europeans there, you know, and I was amazed, you know, it was so many people that English wasn't their first language and um, who, you know, they, they look at Twin Peaks as part of David's body of work. It seemed like a lot more there than sometimes, sometimes here people I encounter. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and I feel like the Twin Peaks, it's, it's great. When I saw Twin Peaks and when I saw Fire Walk with me the first time, when it was first happening, it would be like a thing stuck up in the dorm, like uh, who killed Art Palmer? The one your guest kind of thing. I mean, there was no, like you couldn't, you didn't know anybody else was thinking what you were thinking. Or you walk out of Angelica and everyone goes, that sucked. And you're going, man, I thought that was the best movie I ever saw, you know? And you had no idea that, and so there was like an echo chamber. I mean, there was not the same sort of environment to sort of um, have dialogue here differing opinions, but also to find people that were singing the same song without preaching to the choir, you know? And I feel like that I appreciate a lot because I love Twin Peaks, and it's not because I'm on Twin Peaks, although I love being on Twin Peaks, no. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I really appreciate that, and all of you, you know, that I'm in contact with and who heart my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about, like, I? posted about you coming to the signing yesterday in our picture, and I must have five comments that say that fucker Ray. <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about, like, I guess both of you sort of have yeah. that thing. Like, do you like that fucker Ray? If, no, like, I, I, when he said that, because I didn't know he was going to say that, obviously. That was not in my scenes. So when I was in, because I saw it at the Ace with John, and I was like, I was so was so thrilled. I was like, everyone's that's gonna be my that's gonna be my <laughs> I wanna be that fucker right. And then when I got home, I was like, this is from all those little like Hail Mary moments when I would watch Blue Velvet and I'd be like, I just wanna be like Frank Booth someday. <laughs> and be like, fucker, you fucker and, and now like I'm always walking with my kids like in LA and I heard these guys, they sound like they had German accents, they go, fucker <laughs> <laughs> and my son was like, uh, talking to you, Dad. And I was like, yeah, I know. So I, uh, <laughs> I like it. But they do. Everyone calls me fucker. Yeah. Wait, his mom <laughs> embroidered mom. patches that oh. say that fucker Ray. Seventy-five-year-old <laughs> <laughs> mother is like, that's my son, that fucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a similar experience is that uh, you know I kind of became the the poster guy for misogynist assholes at a bar hitting on women, you know? Wow, you know, and, and uh, initially, like, even my sister, you know, she's like, you had it coming, you know? I'm like, you're my sister, you know, I'm an actor, hey, you know, and even friends, you know, they, it took a while for them for that to, you know, and I'm like, I'm an actor, it's, it's make-believe, you know? And I'll still meet people and they'll be like, uh, at least initially, they'll, they'll feel weird about getting close to me if they've seen the show. If they haven't seen the show yet, they're, and then I'll go, yeah, probably best you meet me now, and now you can watch the show. Because <laughs> you realize, you know, I'm probably, you know, an okay person. And uh, they're like, yeah, I'm glad I met you first, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of how that goes. I love that. Uh, my mom also calls me that fucker, but I'm not <laughs> in a show where that happens. Um, and it, yes. Spencer. Um, that was better, though. I couldn't see. <laughs> uh, what were you both able to bring to your roles from your own life, your own personality, if anything? Well, I checked a few things off my bucket list. Um, having coffee with Cooper, I got to do. I always, I, I just, I would just always think, I just want a night drive. In a David Lynch movie. I got night driving. And, um, you know, I felt like, like I sort of suggested by the stories I told about that first interview, I felt like David had set something free in me <clears throat> that changed my work as an actor. So I feel like that's what I brought with me. I, I felt like I had been bringing that with me since I met him, you know. So David's important to me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did I bring from my life experience to this character? Like, yeah, yeah. If, if any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
you know, this isn't totally applicable, but I forget who said it one time, but they say every scene is a love scene, right? So, in other words, <laughs> believe it or not, when I was working with, with Grace, it's just bringing connection to another human being. And it comes across creepier when you're actually doing it in a open-hearted way, you know, because, I mean, the lines are there. I didn't write those words, you know, I didn't write the scene but I'm just gonna connect with this person and I'm gonna say these things in this circumstance and it's really gonna come across as messed up, you know? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it, it, it uh, you know, these kind of characters are the funnest to play. <laughs> you know, that's the bottom line, yeah. you know? So, yeah, it, 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 it's just like, as an actor, to jump into someone that's so different than you is just a joy, you know, as an actor, because that's really playing make-believe why we got into this in the first place, you know? To be someone else. Something that you can't do in normal life. <laughs> yeah, I've never had my throat ripped out and <laughs> lived to tell, you know? Um, you mentioned the UK Fest, and I was there, and you were there with Kenneth Welch, who just was so alive that weekend. Um, it, it, that was such a great time and you being a fan, what was that like for you? I mean, didn't you just feel he was crazed? Yeah, we took the cab together, like, all over the place. And he, uh, he just told me so many stories. I mean, he told me, I don't think he's seen the return. Because I was like, I was like, you're one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't think he's seen, he must not have seen the return. But no, he told me so many stories, and he was, like, on fire. Like, we would get in the cab, and it would just be one. He told a lot of theater stories to me, really funny theater stories. He told me about working with Kathy Bates, Frankie and Johnny, and all these like backstage tricks that they would play together. And he had this like, he had like an impish kind of like anecdote for like a lot of things, you know. So he, did you remember him dancing? Yeah, it was yeah the, yeah. the, the Wyndham Merles. The Wyndham Merles played. <laughs> That's right. And he danced like a nut. And uh, <laughs> I loved it. It was just so much fun for me. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know. I didn't know who else was going to be there, but I sure didn't think I was going to get the ride in the cab with him. We kept getting stuck in traffic, and he was just, he was brilliant. I was, I was uh, sad when, when he passed, but I was glad I got to meet him, too. Yeah, so it's a, that's the thing about these events, that we get to see these people, and so many of them are passing, and, you know, no one will take that moment. I just remember him being so alive in those Q&As, and all of that. Just like this event right here. How he wrap that up? He was a professional. Uh, thank you both so much for sharing your stories and you know, thanks everyone. We have one more panel left and that's going to be about scenic locations. I think that's going to be very interesting. Grab a drink, do whatever, and we'll be back shortly.